Okay. Uh, my name is Nelson Bilde. I work here at IDS um, in the uh, BODS and uh, the knowledge section. I'm not as, you know, surpassed Williams. was really, really passionate, but I, I subscribe to uh, what Jesus has said. I'm uh, actually a Zambian by nationality, uh, just in diaspora. Probably William will be really annoyed with me <laughs> here yeah, rather than there. But anyway, it has helped me to understand some of these issues that William has said because I've traveled a lot through this project in Africa and uh, that's where I've learned that actually open access means certain, certainly different things between what we know as open access here and what they know as open access there. It just doesn't work the way it's configured here. So. My, my presentation is quite short. It's just based on to uh, just um, talk about what uh, my colleagues have mentioned about the importance of local knowledge. I'm just going to talk about it from our perspective, from our observations, having worked on this project. And then whatever thereafter happens, we, it's up to us to discuss what, but to discuss the way forward with how we go about it, as we've come to learn that you know, open access means different things, and if we're going to be successful, we need to start thinking differently. So, uh, I'm not going to say much about IDS, uh, I think my, uh, Melissa and uh, other colleagues have talked about what IDS is all about, what it is. It, it does its work and what, 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 how we go along. But what I'm going to talk about is just uh, this project which we had or the program called Global Open Knowledge Hub, uh, which was funded by DFID and came to an end in March. Um, as usual, I mean, it was about in, to improve the quality and accessibility of development knowledge. Uh, how we interpret that, we, as we've discovered, this actually means something as well different. It means different things to different people. Are we supposed to be the custodian of that knowledge to provide it to the rest of the world, or should that knowledge live somewhere else? And so it's, 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 it's kind of different. So I'll just throw up some, some of the statistics or observations that we've seen from our, one of our platforms. So. That's what we, we, we were aiming to do. Um, you know, to increase uh, visibility of uh, research literature, uh, you know, by pro, uh, policy makers and practitioners. I'm, 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 I'm wary of the use of the word knowledge here. And I'm, I'm tending to not to use it so much more. That's why I mentioned it, literature. I think uh, I'm much probably comfortable with that way myself, but I don't know uh, about the, the, the others because knowledge means some, so many things to different people. Um, so this is done by gathering quality and then distributing that knowledge uh, or knowledge literature. But also, what we were doing was also distributing, having, you know, connecting uh, the, to the actual final piece of literature. Uh, so we provide the visibility and then the discoverability to the final, to the final. Uh, so we use, um, so, so in essence, GOG actually developed uh, some technical infrastructure. I mean, I like mentioned some of, uh, some of them, what's problems we, we discovered. This is also to do with the way LDS, as Alan has mentioned, you know, transition from being what we call a portal, visible, you know, to a user, to try and use another aspect uh, of what we call we call it, uh, the global hub, becoming a platform that anyone can play on that, which means they can put stuff and get it out, you know, programmatically rather than giving a user. That way then 
knowledge is, is more shared in a nicer way where it's viewed, you know, where it's really needed. But as Alan has mentioned, that gave us a lot of problems because the technical skills are not there for the people that we thought would be able to use this, this knowledge. So this is what it is. Uh, so the, the global hub is basically just the technical infrastructure, it's a platform where our content is placed by through our own IDA services as well as other partners we work with. And then it can be consumed by systems rather than individuals. So that's the difference. So, and uh, through that, uh, we develop also uh, editorial support and technical innovations to enable the partners to do just that. But as we say, uh, it was really a difficult thing because of lack of standards, lack of technical capacity, and also uh, the project, we didn't have resources for capacity building. That's what we, we found. So, from just from the observation that we came, well, that we saw, I'll just pick one, which just reinforces this uh, thinking that probably local research is valued by local, local users. Um, I'm not saying valued as being used because what we, we, what we are using to describe this is just a number of downloads, where they're coming from, as a proxy to use, because, I mean, evaluation, one-time evaluation, to really see impact is quite, quite, quite difficult. So, what we see is, uh, we see that within a, a, a collection, for example, if that material, the publications, are from that particular country, say Ethiopia, for example, the number of downloads coming from Ethiopia are higher compared to anywhere else. Yeah? And also, uh, the number of traffic from countries around that, that country is also where higher than the top 10. Then what, 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 what we did also, what I did also was to look at, because our repositories, two repositories, one is what we call the digital library, where we have uh, curated uh, publications that we used to hold here, coming from developing countries, as well as the IDS uh, publications. You can see that actually, if you look at Africa, between these are northern published um, research, this is southern published research, you can see the distribution of where traffic is coming from. So, so within uh, the, uh, the, the developing country recently, you see that Africa actually represents quite a high number compared to Africa's accessing material that is originating from here. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. So again, um, so within that observation, we, we LDS also uh, found this, a similar pattern where they worked with a partner in the uh, Philippines where they saw that actually uh, having these resources av available and discoverable, they were actually being accessed more from people within the Philippines. <coughs> so that, that's, that's, the, that's what we were discovering. So I'll just say, uh, I didn't do the slides for that, but I'll just show you what I mean uh, on the system. Hope, hope the internet works. <laughs> so this is uh, where we put all the uh, resources. So we've got different, this is where we've put all material that we've 
not producing here, which was in the library, and also something that we've worked with partners to digitize and put there, just to see what, what, what is happening. And this is where, uh, this is purely IDS and IDS partners. So when we look at uh, the overall statistics when we started, uh, so out of everything, this is the usage, what, what we see. So you could see that there are more downloads there, and these are the views. And uh, this is actually the distribution of, uh, of where the users are coming from, right? But then if I show you, uh, If I go to, to this one, this is all developing countries. It's actually digitized. So this content was never available digitally. It's just the first time it's being made available. Um, so we can see, again, you know, people like from Ethiopia, they are more coming to download that material. Of course, uh, the US and China, China has been very, very aggressive in this area. One interesting thing, if, if we look at uh, just one of them, uh, this is uh, McHale University. They've got 205 items that we hold for them, digitized. And uh, if we look at statistics by country, uh, you can see what's going on there. So the, the, the question that we, we, we are trying to, to grab on is, uh, Actually, uh, research literature from those countries actually is more probably better used by those people from those countries. Uh, what we've then learned, just to it in summary, is uh, yeah, it's a long, long thing. Again, it just reiterates what uh, William and other colleagues have mentioned about. It's about partnerships. It's about capacity, and uh, it's also one, one observation that we've also seen is that, uh, you know, there is a big uptake of repositories and open journal systems in, in developing countries, but, you know, they are not working well. Uh, the reason is also technical skills and the way they've been embedded into, uh, into, into the whole operation. They are, they've been made as projects rather than being part of uh, the whole ecosystem within that university. South Africa is different now. It's realized that actually having publications that are easily accessible brings in collaboration, research collaboration by other researchers from the West or from other countries in the South South uh, collaboration country. But also it helps them with, to recruit students uh, through that, that, that kind of capability. So you find Macarena University is doing that, uh, Invest on Nairobi is, is doing that. Then there is also, again, the other problem is also awareness, is it there? As I said, as William has said, it's, it's the open access thing. Uh, I was once invited to Invest on Zimbabwe to discuss the open access policy. and. Uh, yeah, the problems that came up were quite different from the way we look at them here. One of them is obviously uh, the problem of the APCs. Uh, William has mentioned them, I'm not going to talk much about it. But there, there is now talk, uh, I've read a, a, an article which 
which is saying probably this APC is now is going to generate the acceptability of predatory journals, then that leads to the problem of quality as well. So it's something to, uh, to watch out. The other, the other clear policy, the other thing that we saw is a lack of clear policy and lack of awareness or fear of plagiarism. Uh, because the project that I was working on was pre, uh, you know, digitizing materials that were originally not um, uh, digital. So the plagiarism fear wasn't really about someone nicking somebody's paper to be uh, kind of, uh, you know, to be passed on as their own as a student, but we really it was about the back issues being digitized, then most of the professors that had positions actually were scared that, you know, some of the things that they published a long time ago to get whatever they got were not actually very right. So that's, that's, the, that's the other thing. My, my really going forward is the big question, how do we go about this? Um, I think from where we come from, I think uh, we need probably to start moving the, sh the, the thinking from being a service provider to more about you know, helping our colleagues to become better at publishing and distributing at you know, making this all accessible, accessibility work, I think. That's my personal view. I don't know what others think. Uh, I just wanted also to point out uh, uh, the myth of the on-demand uh, portals uh, quickly. Uh, I think Melissa alluded to that, that donors are much more better, you know, willing to find things like she mentioned the Ebola where, you know, you can pop up something very quickly that provides that resources and knowledge about it. Then you've got also, I mean, big discovery services like Google doing the same thing. But my, my fear is what everybody is forgetting, probably I throw it up to, to us to, to figure out is those platforms that actually pop up or even that Google pop up actually depends yeah, I can say depends on the data silos that are already there, the repositories, the library systems, everything that is already there. Now the question is, if we are looking at just this veneer layer where it, it just gives us, you know, show me where to find it rather than give me, you know, give it to me, uh, then the whole concept won't work. I don't think it's going to work. So probably we, we might need to start redefining maybe transforming the portals into more platforms rather than portals and helping our colleagues in developing countries to develop the similar portals that can actually feed into this uh, what I call quick demand on demand kind of portal where there's a, a situation you can just pull resources around but the bottom line should be there but it will be hard to convince anyone to say this is the best way to find it uh, you know, I throw that to you. <laughs> we, we could think about that. Thank you very much.